Good morning, everybody. I can't see it because there's this bright light in my eyes. My name is Dave Alexander. I'm a, I'm a pediatrician, and for the last uh, five years, I've had the privilege of uh, being the president and CEO at the Lucille Packard Foundation for Children's Health. We are based in Palo Alto, and we are not Facebook. Um, <laughs> like everything else in Palo Alto seems to be these days. I want to thank Kathleen for letting us participate uh, in uh, this day with uh, you all. And just tell you, uh, I'm going to take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about our foundation and what we do, because we're kind of an unusual uh, organization. Our, our mission is really to elevate the priority of children's health. Um, and as a, as a pediatrician, you know, it, uh, I do it a lot and it saddens me, but the reality is, is that as a society, we don't value our children and their health very much. Um, that's a hard thing to say, um, but if you look around us, if you look at the state of our children and their health, we clearly don't put a very high priority on it. So our foundation's mission is to elevate that priority um, and uh, with, with a goal towards making sure that each of the children in the communities that we serve is, has the ability to reach their maximum health potential. Now we do that through three very um, disparate kinds of strategies. Uh, first of all, the one that we're probably the best known for is that we are the philanthropic supporters for all of child health at Stanford, including the Stanford School of Medicine uh, and the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Now, some of you may know the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. It is the primary source of specialty care for kids in Santa Clara County. It's a pretty unusual children's hospital in that um, uh, most children's hospitals care for a mix of sort of general community acquired illness and some specialty care. And because we're fortunate in this community that we've got a number of strong community hospitals like Valley Medical Center, uh, O'Connor Hospital who provide care to kids, the kids who end up at Packard Children's Hospital tend to be more focused on the tertiary and quaternary care that we're really designed to do. So we have... Um, there's a measure in healthcare called case mix, which is a measure of how sick the kids are. And the acuity or the case mix index at Packard Children's Hospital is the highest of any children's hospital in the country. And once again, it's not because the kids in this area are sicker, it's because we've got a large number of community partner hospitals who are able to care for the more sort of routine community acquired illness. Um, the hospital's only been open for about 20 years, and during that time it has grown from what started started out as a small, nice academic community medical center to one of those hospitals that shows up in U.S. News and World Report um, as a top children's hospital. Uh, and uh, Susan Orr, who's Lucille Packard's daughter, who's uh, been my boss for the past couple of years as uh, our board chair, um, has often said to me that if her mom came back today to see the hospital that they started 20 years ago, she wouldn't recognize the place. Um, and the hospital is really serving quite a different mission than it was built for. Um, and really as a result of that, the hospital has outgrown its physical structure. And a large part of what we're doing now is trying to raise community support for building, um, and let me see if I can figure out how to work these slides. Hmm. All right, Reagan or somebody, what am I doing wrong here? Which button am I working? You're making me feel better, David. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> so do that now, try. All right. Now, actually, just um, see, there you go. Try now. Ah. So some of you may have seen Packard Children's Hospital. This is what Packard Children's Hospital will be in a few years. Um, and this is a new hospital that will be built on the corner of Welch and Quarry that's really designed to take care of the very high acuity, highly complex kids that are uh, the kids that we care for today. So that's one thing that we do. The second thing that our foundation does is it spends a lot of time on data, and that's a big focus for today. And in a couple of minutes, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Reagan Faust, to talk about our data data efforts around uh, a website that we run called kidsdata.org. And the third thing that we do is we have a very specific focus on the system of care for children with special health care needs. Um, now, who are the kids with special health care needs in our community? Well, the Maternal Child Health uh, Bureau defines a child with special health care needs as a child who requires more than routine care. 
So it's a fairly broad definition and it includes kids with conditions as sort of common and relatively mild as asthma or mild learning disabilities all the way up to and including very complex things like congenital heart disease and leukemia and cystic fibrosis and sickle cell disease. So if you look at this population of kids, how many of these kids are there? Well, it's about 15% of all children. If you look at Santa Clara County, it's about 65,000 children in Santa Clara County would be defined as having a special health care need. And if you um, look at the subset of uh, these kids who require the kind of complex care that our children's hospitals, either locally or across the country, provide, it's about a third of these kids. So there are about 20 or 25,000 kids in Santa Clara County who've got a condition that's complex enough or serious enough that they might end up um, in a children's hospital like ours. Now the reason that we got into this work is that it's certainly been my observation over the years and the observation of many others that if you're a child with a complex um, health care need, whether once again that's diabetes or sickle cell disease or leukemia, and you're acutely sick and you show up at a place like Packard Children's Hospital or Oakland Children's Hospital or LA Children's Hospital, you're going to get wonderful care during that episode of illness while you're sick. But for the 98 or 99 percent of the rest of your life when you're home and in your community, the system doesn't work all that well for you. And in many ways it works less well if you're poor, it works less well for sure if you uh, don't speak English, and it works less well if you live far from an academic medical center, but it doesn't work particularly well for anybody. Um, one of the things that our foundation did early on was we commissioned a health services researcher to look at some national data on how children with special health care needs are faring in California. Um, the federal government does a survey every five years called the National Children's Survey and another survey called the National Survey of Children with Special Health Care Needs. Um, and uh, we asked her to take a deep dive into the California data on this survey. And the, the data was kind of depressing. Now remember that one out of every seven American children lives in this state. And um, as part of this analysis, uh, Christy, who's the researcher, constructed a system performance index. Now when we talk about the quality of the delivery system, we're not talking about does the child with sickle cell disease get the right antibiotics when they're sick? Does the child with diabetes get the right insulin dose? Or does the child with leukemia get the right chemotherapy. We're looking at much broader measures of how the system works. So the system performance measure, the quality index, really looks at three things. Number one, does the child have insurance that's adequate to meet their needs? Number two, is their care coordinated? Is there some body or group of bodies or entity that's responsible for making sure that all of the people who are providing care to this child and their family are coordinating that efforts? And the third um, was that it does the child have, has the child had a health maintenance visit in the last 12 months? So insurance, coordination, and preventive care. And if you look across the country, the sad news is that only about 45% of families say yes to all three of those things. And there are a handful of states that do a little bit better than that, and there are a handful of states that do statistically worse, worse than that, and the state that we live in performs worse than any other state in the country. Only 17% of children um, in California say yes to all three of those things. Um, we think that's a burning platform on which we are basing a lot of our work. Um, and so uh, uh, there's a guy named Don Berwick. Some of you may have known Don Berwick. He was the administrator at CMS in Washington, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And Don is the master of the pithy saying. And my favorite of Don's pithy sayings is that every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. Um, so if you wanted to build a system to create the worst performance in the country for kids with chronic illness, just come to California because we've got it. Um, so our foundation spent the better part of the last two years trying to understand the way that system works today. And I'm not going to go over this with you. This gives me flashbacks to medical school, to biochemistry and the Krebs cycle, and I don't want to look at it. Um, but this is, in essence, the way the delivery system in California is organized today. 
Um, and w we as a foundation uh, brought a lot of people a lot smarter than me together from both healthcare and social services and patients and families and used the tools of industrial design to try to build a better system. And we think this better system looks something like this and if you ever invite us back I'll have more time I can go into more details about what this looks like. But our work as a foundation is largely to migrate this morass that we live in to something that creates a better performing system to really maximize the health outcomes of these kids and their families. And we really have three different strategies that we're going to use to do this work. Um, one, um, we have the ability to make grants uh, and commission actual project work to do pilots, to do data collection, to do other things to try to stimulate system improvement. Um, two, uh, we have uh, created an advocacy network for this community. Now there are lots of people who are out there advocating for pieces of this. There are certainly parent groups who advocate for the particular disease that their child has. You know, there's a Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and a Diabetes Foundation and a Cancer Foundation. Um, there are trade groups, you know, the doctors advocate and the nurses advocate and the schools advocate. Um, but what we're trying trying to do at our foundation is to try to create an overarching advocacy collaborative where we can find points of common interest and concern among all of these different groups and bring them together. And actually, if you're interested in this, there'll be a sign-up sheet available in the lunchroom for those of you who want to get involved in this and just get on our mailing list. So I would ask you to check that out at lunch. And lastly, we are going to use our communication tools, including our data tools, um, to help communicate this issue as a, as a uh, uh, public concern because I don't think anybody wants to wave the flag and say that we're really living in the worst performing system in the country. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague Reagan and she's going to talk to you a little bit about our data efforts. Well, hello everyone. I, I'm Reagan Faust. I'm the data manager for the for kidsdata.org, which is our data liberation mission. Um, So this is a snapshot of kids' data, and I'm just going to navigate to the site so we can see how it works in real time. So, so one of our missions is to make data freely available to anybody who is interested. Um, in this way, we can make child health and well-being a higher priority in California. So Kids Data is a website um, where people, so this is all people, data and non-data people, can find, digest, use, and share information on child health and well-being. So it was created to be a big time saver for people on the ground who may or may not have resources to collect all of this information on their own. So it, is designed to get you right to the data that you need. Um, you can download, print out, um, and send data easily to other people who might be interested. It's compiled from over 50 credible data sources, and it can be even delivered directly to you uh, if you sign up for what we call e-alerts. So that will uh, alert you when data have been updated. It's trustworthy, so it's continually updated and checked by myself and our data team. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we only use credible sources that are available all throughout California. It's also very comprehensive. Uh, we have over 400 indicators in over 60 topics, and uh, that is uh, over 10 million data points. And it's also completely customizable. So you can customize the time, uh, the time frame that you're viewing, the type of view that you would like to see the data in, uh, the regions in which you're looking at. So uh, we have data at the state, county, city, school district, and even at the legislative level. So the data are organized in three ways. We have data by topic, by demographic group, and also by region. And I figured that it would be, for the purposes of this presentation, best to go by region. Santa Clara County is a, a, a region that we have lots of data for, even down to the school district level. Uh, there are three ways to get the data. So you can use these navigation bars at the top. You can also use the orange buttons. 
that will allow you to quickly see the information available within that. Um, and you can also use our search bar, which is very helpful um, and newly improved. I'm going to use the navigation key here, but um, so just as a check, how many are familiar with kids' data? Just raise your hand. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, so you guys know some of the bells and whistles that go along with this. I'm not going to have time to go into all of them today, but I, I urge you, whether or not you have you've, uh, are familiar with the website, or um, just dive in yourself, look around, see what you can find. Um, and if you have any questions at all, please uh, contact me using the feedback. Um, all the emails actually go directly to me, so I will respond to you personally. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to look at the region section, and we're going to look up information on Santa Clara County. So here you can see all of the different regions that we have information on. And if I were to look for Santa Clara County, you can see that I would be interested in the county level information, but you could also see city and school district level information as well. If I go here, this is going to take me to the Santa Clara County section of the site. Now, listed here are a list of the categories for which we have information on Santa Clara County. Each of these will take you to a dashboard, which is a, a, a data highlights. So it doesn't include all of the data here. Um, if you wanted to see all of the data, you would click on the See All button next to each. Just a, a note while we're here, uh, you could see all the data for Santa Clara County by clicking on this link right here, and it'll give you a list in a table of just Santa Clara County's information just uh, across all of the categories. And you can also choose to just customize the data. So say in, you are looking for specifically um, weight information and fitness information, you would use this link and click only those two uh, sections and topics, and it would spit that out for you. You, um, you could also share this entire section with someone who might be interested via email, you could print it out, you could put it on any, so any one of these social networking sites. And you can also print out a PDF that has key indicators for this region. So uh, a very timely topic um, would be physical health. Uh, this is a category. Um, and one of the things that we haven't yet touched, uh, we've touched tangentially upon has been physical fitness. So with this, you can see just a few of the indicators that we have within this topic. Um, but I let's say, would be very interested in the percentage of children who are meeting all of the fitness standards for the state of California. And I'm not seeing it on the dashboard, so I'm going to go into see all. Now, this is a very long list of all of the different data that we have, and it's just Santa Clara County information. So this is how we hope that this will help you find exactly what you're looking for. So if I were to continue down and look specifically for fitness information, and I'm doing this because I, I think that we've touched a lot, uh, upon a lot of the other um, subjects, and the, the wonderful um, book that has been given to us touches uh, upon many of those, so I want to do something just a little different. Um, so with this physical fitness information, here's the data that we have available. So we have it by grade and gender. We also just have it by grade, and we have it by race ethnicity. So if I wanted to go um, and just see the information for Santa Clara County across, eight, across different grades, as well as different eight, uh, time frames, here it is. With it, I also have the definition, the data source, and any interpretive information that would be helpful um, for me. Um, and within the data source, too, we always try to provide links so that people can easily verify the information or receive other, um, you know, look to see if there's other information available on that site. 
Um, so this is very helpful, uh, but what if it's not exactly what I'm looking for? If I wanted to um, see a different region, for example, I wanted to see Santa Clara County in relation to California. Um, if I wanted to see uh, a different time frame, maybe I wanted to see the data as a trend, then all I would do is click in to see uh, add regions, view notes, and this would take me to the indicator page. So this is all of the information for that particular indicator. Now it's already customized since I went through the region section to show me the information for Santa Clara County as well as all of the school districts within it, which could be very helpful. Um, what I would also, from this page, be able to do is visualize the data in a different way, say I wanted to see it as a trend. And it automatically creates it for me. A map, and this would be at the count at the state level, uh, but you can also zoom in and show the data by school district as well. And let's say I wanted to see it as a bar. Now with all of these, you can customize the graph to show different time frames, as I mentioned. You can do sorting options um, and show different, uh, basically make the graph the exact way that you want it to look. So let's say I was interested in grade five, the students that are meeting all fitness standards based on the California Department of Education's standards. Um, and this is helpful, but I want to see California as well. So here, I can add in or X out any of these, um, but I just added California to show you that you can easily have the data there for you. In addition, let's say I wanted to rank the school districts. Within that, I would click on the percent, and voila, you have all of the school districts ranked in order for you. Now, I wanted to point out, um, on the left-hand side of each of these, uh, number one is that e-alert link that I wanted to um, make sure you knew about. If you were interested in fitness information, you would just put your, uh, put your email here, and we would notify you when we're going to be updating the information. And actually, this is a good one to show that on, because in a couple weeks, we're going to be updating this information with 2011 information. This view data highlights will take you back to a dashboard, as we mentioned before. Um, and this is for the whole topic, and this is just uh, highlights of that topic. In order to see all of the data within the topic, you would see related data. So these are all the indicators that we have within this topic, as well as other topics that might be of interest to you. And finally, in order to learn more about this topic, on the dashboard page and on every indicator page, down below, you'll see um, a description of the measures of the indicators within this topic, why this topic is important, policy implications written by policy analysts, and how children are faring per the data that we have. You also have uh, links to websites and related information and key reports and also county and regional reports, which is going to be very helpful for people at the local level. So with all of this as well, if you go back into the indicator, a couple more things to point out. You can, once you get the data looking exactly the way, the way that you want it, you can print this out exactly, share it, as I mentioned it before, we have lots of options there. You can also print out a PDF of the information on this topic, but you could also choose to add this graph into that PDF. You can download all of the data or just the current data that you're seeing into Excel so you can work with it on your own. You can copy this table or, or view directly into Word or PowerPoint to create uh, your own reports. And finally, one of the cooler things that we have is an embed option where people who have their own website would be able to put this link directly onto their website and 
it would be completely updated every time that we update the data. The data on the recipient site would be updated as well. So we highly encourage that as well as a way to share this information. So although I'm not going to be able to show you everything on the site, I did just want to um, point out that the data, the other two ways that the data are categorized are by topic, and you can view all of the indicators, as I mentioned, there are over 400, and the demographic groups. And you can view all of the, sorry. <laughs> I was timing myself, making sure I wouldn't go over. I want to be respectful to the other, uh, <laughs> the other speakers. Um, so with all of this, um, if you have any questions at all, please do not uh, hesitate to contact me. Um, we're very excited to share this information with you and to get the data out there um, in a, an easy to use um, and helpful way. And of course, it's free to you all and we just would love for you to use it. Thank you.